So I've closed the results page from my shortcut column, but before I did that, I noted a few pieces of information down. I noted down my number of stages, about 15. I noted down my feed stage between nine and 10. I noted down my overhead vapor rate, which I've got actually from the splitter here, which was 1.1 kilomoles per hour. And also my overhead distillate rate, which was about 84.8 kilomoles per hour. Also, I need to know the reflux ratio predicted by the shortcut tool, which was roughly five and a half. So I'm gonna select a fully rigorous distillation column, which is this icon here on the palette, and I'm gonna drop that onto the flow sheet. Note that I'm not going to use a component splitter now to solve my methane problem. To solve the methane problem, I'm gonna have a partial condenser. I'm gonna specify a vent rate to allow out a certain amount of methane gas rather than having a fictional separator such as this doing the job for me. So with the rigorous distillation tool dropped onto the flow sheet, we're gonna double click it. And this time we notice a bit of a difference in how we set it up. The rigorous distillation simulation tool within Unisim is quite a complex beast. And so we have a guided process to give it the right amount of information and we set it up in sort of layers. So the first page that comes up is all around the connections. So we're going to give it an inlet stream of V100 liquid. We're going to give it a condenser energy stream and we're going to call it T-101 condenser energy. We look at the condenser, we keep the specification as a partial condenser because we want that methane bleed. So I'm going to give a purge rate here, which is going to be T101 methane purge. And then my distillate proper, which is T101 distillate. I'm then going to get out of the reboiler. It's got T101 reboiler energy. And then the residue, T101 residue. Now, the number of stages I need to increase from 10 to 15. So I'm going to put 15 in there. I'm going to change my inlet stage here to stage nine, noting it's between nine and 10. Now that I've set everything up on this page, I see the next button has appeared. And so I'm going to single left click on that, which takes me through to the pressure specification page. So the condenser and the reboiler, I'm both setting at four bar. I'm going to, for the time being, ignore any pressure drop along the length of the column. The reality is we have designed the pressure drop in these columns to be quite low, and so roughly equal condenser and reboiler pressure for a shortish column isn't going to be too far out at this stage. I'm then going to click next. I have some optional information I can give the simulation. I'm just going to skip over that. And then finally, I need to set my reflux ratio, five and a half. I need to set my distillate liquid rate, 84.8 kilomoles per hour, and my vapor purge rate, 1.1 kilomoles per hour. Then I'm gonna click done. And once I do that, I get the main screen for the distillation tool proper appearing. Now, there are lots of tabs on the bottom of this. We're not going to explore many of these in this tutorial. We'll just keep to the design tab. Within the design tab, we have these six pages here. We're going to be looking at the connections page, which is the one we have up, and also the monitor page. Let's click onto monitor right now. What we have here are the various specifications that the distillation column is going to converge to initially. We'll keep those as they are for the time being. And when it does so, we get a temperature profile graph up here which is a very useful indicator of what the column is actually doing or sometimes not doing. With all these specifications set, I'm going to just run it and see whether something happens. So the run button is just here. So single left click that and almost immediately I have this green bar saying column converged. Don't close the simulation tool, don't walk away, look very carefully at what's been calculated because you're going to find it is not what you want. Now, Let's put this control screen over to one side and let's examine the compositions of each of our streams. Our methane purge comprises of less than 50% methane, 43.87%. Our distillate, remembering that this is where we want our pentane stream to come out, consists of not only pentane, but hexane and heptane and octane. We have a look at our residue, 
we find that it consists of pure octane. So rather than a pentane removal column, our column has converged to be an octane removal column, which is not what we want. So what we need to do now is reconvert this column in a sensible way such that it actually gives us a pentane strain. Now, we're going to do this by setting different specifications. So I'm going to replace these three specifications here, reflux ratio, vapor rate, and distillate rate, with three different specifications. So I'm going to first of all add a specification which is going to correspond to the amount of pentane in my distillate. So this is a mole fraction, so this is set as column component fraction. Add specification. I'm looking at the distillate stream rather than the stage, so I select stream. I'm looking at the distillate, T101 distillate. I'm looking at n-pentane as a species of interest. And my specification value, I want it to be 95%. So I'm going to click put more 0.95. So finally, I'm going to give this a sensible name. And this is going to be NC5 in distillate mole fraction. OK, so I'm going to close that. And if I just change the width of that, I can see that that new specification has appeared. But nothing else has changed. I need, of course, to rerun my column for those specifications to take effect. So let's define a few more specifications before we do that. So the next specification I'm going to add is all around the methane recovery. I want as much methane to be recovered as possible in that purge. So I'm going to add a new specification. Rather than the mole fraction, I want to say I want a certain percentage recovered in this stream. So this is a column component recovery now. I'm going to add that specification. Again, I'm dealing with a stream. I am dealing with the purge, the methane purge, and I'm concerned about methane. And I would like pretty much all of it to go into that stream. We'll see that this is an unrealistic goal to set, but we'll set it for the time being. And I'm going to call this something sensible. So this is going to be CH4 purge, and this is fractional rather than fractional recovery rather than mole fraction. So I'm going to close that screen. The final thing I'm going to do is add a specification that I may or may not need, which is how much hexane I'm going to have in the base of the column. So I'm going to set it up and then leave it slightly loosely defined. So N hexane in the stream, the stream is the residue. And what I would actually like to do is to specify a value that corresponds to what I think should be going in. So we'll have a look in a minute at what mole fraction is entering in the feed and we'll work out what mole fraction has to enter in exit in the residue. So I'm going to leave that empty for the time being as a specification and I'm going to give it a sensible name which is NC6 recovery, NC6 fraction in residue mole fraction basis. Okay. Now, it may turn out we may not need this specification, but it's there in case we do. So now that we've defined these three extra specifications, let's see what's been calculated versus what we want. If we consider our methane purge to start with, as opposed to our entire methane ending up in that stream, only 43.7% has been recovered. If we look at NC5, rather than having a mole fraction of 0.95 in the distillate, we've got a mole fraction of 0.11. So we need to change these. Now, one of the best ways to reconverge a column is to take a readily converged column, as we have now, and subtly change over one of these specifications. And I'm going to do it to start with on the methane purge. Now, to make sure I can maintain convergence when I change a specification, I'm going to put this specified value here not as one, but as what has already been calculated here. So that's going to be 0.4368. If I change my purge, I'm going to be changing the purge vapor rate. So I'm going to switch off overhead vapor rate as a specification, and I'm going to put this purge recovery as a specification. And note when I change over, because it's identical to what was there already, we automatically have convergence. 
Now I'm just going to ever so subtly increase this purge rate up to say 0.45. We get very quick convergence. Now 0.5, that looks good. 0.6, still converging quickly. 0.7, converging quickly. 0.8, converging quickly. 0.9, can't meet it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to 0.8. Maybe try 0 0.85, 0 0.86, 0 0.87. Can't meet 0.87, we'll stick with 0.86. Okay, so we've almost doubled the amount of methane recovery this column is now doing. In doing so, if we look at the amount of pentane in the distillate, it's dropped. There's now negligible pentane in the distillate, which is something that we need to remedy. So, as before, we're going to set our specified value here to this calculated value here, 8.806 times 10 to the minus two. Then I'm going to swap my distillate rate specification for this distillate composition specification. And as you can see, it converges immediately because we've set it to be the same as what was calculated the last time around. And now we're going to gradually increase this and see what its upper limit is. So let's set it up to 0.1, that works, 0.3, it converges, but look how quickly that temperature profile is changing. That's 0.5, big change of temperature profile. 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, still looking good. 0 0.95, still converging. 0 0.96, 0 0.97, 0 0.98, won't converge beyond 0.97. So let's keep it 0.97. Okay. So we'll see our temperature profile now has changed very considerably to what it was compared to before. We still have maintained our reflux ratio of five and a half. We haven't had to use our additional specification here of n-hexane in our residue, so that's good. Let's see how our column is actually performing. So I'm gonna close the distillation control tab. I'm gonna look first of all at my purge stream and the composition of that is 97% methane with a little bit of n-pentane, which we would expect because n-pentane is gonna have a vapor pressure. And because we've increased this recovery, this has actually dropped to quite a cold temperature. Now we're going to note this, this may not be economically achievable because to get a temperature of minus 16 in our condenser, we're going to need a refrigeration stream and this may be an expense we don't want to go to. We may only be able to maintain a temperature here that we can achieve with either an air cooler or with cooling water. So minus 16 here is a red flag, but we would keep that in because it might be suitable for the design we're trying to do. Our distillate temperature is also going to be the same because of course vapor liquid equilibrium happens between these two streams. Our distillate composition is looking a lot better. We have 97% n-pentane with a touch of residual methane and very little n-hexane. So this is good. All our heavier hydrocarbons are now in the residue of our column. And if we look at our residue, we can see that we have, as expected, a smidge of pentane, but mostly n-hexane, n-heptane and n-octane. So now we have converged our distillation column to our requirements rather than what was convenient for the simulator to converge to.